Hi everyone, in today's tutorial we will be doing some intermediate level C -sharp scripts. I won't be explaining every line, however, all the scripts will be in the description, fully commented, so that you can use them and tweak them however you want in your project. Hi everyone, how's it going? My name is Sergio and welcome to a new Anima 2D tutorial. In today's tutorial, we will be taking a look at how we can make limbs in our characters get loose or pop out whenever we want them to. So let's take a quick look at what we'll be making today. So here you see that I have a zombie character and whenever I left click, the left arm first pops out, falls to the ground, and then it disappears. If I left click again, the same thing happens for the head. Okay, so once I have my new project open, we're gonna go ahead and import the asset package that will be in the description below. I have it ready over here, so I'm just gonna double click on it and it will open a new window inside of Unity. Let's make sure everything is selected and then click import. So once the asset package has been imported, let's open the scenes folder and let's get go into the main scene. Once we're in the main scene, we're ready to get started. The first thing we will need to do is to create an empty game object inside of the zombie character to hold all of our limbs. So let's call it limb pool. Inside of limb pool, we're gonna create a new empty game object, which is gonna be the first limb that we will be doing. I'm gonna call it limb left shoulder. We will make the effect by placing a limb that will be a game object that we create on top of the body mesh that we want to detach. We then make the body mesh transparent and the limb game object will fall to the ground and then it will disappear. So let's go ahead and add the rigid body 2D component and then add a sprite render. For the sprite, we will use the left shoulder sprite. Let's change the mass of the rigid body 2D to 2.5 and adjust the gravity scale to 2. Let's bring up the ordering layer and now we will create an empty game object inside of the limb game object that we will call Collider. Then we will add a component and I'm gonna add a capsule collider to D. The reason why we're adding the collider on a separate game object is because that way we can move the collider around and even rotate it. So let's move it towards the center and then rotate it until it matches the rotation of the arm and then we'll change the X and the Y values. Now we will need to create the limb script that will trigger the coroutine that takes care of fading the object to transparent once it has been detached from the body. To do so, let's click on add component, new script, name it limb and open it in Visual Studio. We will start by deleting the start and update functions. Then we will create a public coroutine named fade2 that takes three arguments. A float called init value that will determine the initial alpha value to fade from, a float called duration that will determine the duration of the fade, and a float called time until start that will determine the time to wait until it starts fading. We then use wait for seconds to wait the amount of time that we set in time until start. Then we set up a reference to the sprite renderer. We create a new color that will be white with an alpha of zero. We then set the color in the renderer to the new color. We create a float variable called alpha and we initialize it with the current value of the renderer. Then we use a for loop to make the fading, based on the duration variable. Inside the for loop, we use mathflurp to interpolate the alpha value, making it decrease, and we set the new color to the renderer. When t is bigger than 0.98, and therefore the limb is almost transparent, we will disable the game object. We will then use two required component attributes at the top of the class declaration to make sure that we always have a rigid body 2D and a sprite renderer attached to this game object. With that ready, we can close Visual Studio and go back into Unity. I'm gonna go ahead and create another limb with the same exact process for the head. So I'm gonna copy this game object and I'm gonna call it limb head. I will change the sprite to the head sprite. It's gonna be head without any numbers. Then we'll change the order and layer to 17 or something a little bit higher than the arm. And we will change the collider. Instead of having a capsule collider, I'm gonna have a circle collider 2D. Let's position it right in the middle and modify the radius. We are now ready to create the manager script that will control when we make the limbs drop. This script is the core of the system. So let's go to the zombie game object and let's add a component, a new script, and we'll call it falling limb. Let's open it up in Visual Studio. First, we will delete the start and update functions. 
Now let's declare a few variables. We will use the range attribute to make Unity show a slider in the inspector to modify the values of the variables below. Let's create two floats, one called fade time that will be 1 by default and another called time until start that will be 2 by default. These two variables will control how long the limbs will be in the fading animation with fade time and how long the coroutine will wait until it starts fading with time until start. Next we will define two colors, one white with one in the alpha and another one that will be black with zero alpha value. We will use a custom list to set up the limbs more easily. The list will be of type rigid limb, a type that we'll be creating shortly. We will also use an integer named current limb that will be the index of the current limb in the list and we will default this to zero. We also need a boolean called isActive that will make sure we don't try to drop limbs that we have not created. Now we will create the rigid limb data class. To do so let's go back into Unity and in the project panel click right click create C sharp script and we're gonna call it rigid limb. Open it up in Visual Studio. We will use a data class to store the references and parameters that we need to make the effect. Since this is a data class, we won't need to inherit from mono behavior, so let's delete it. We will also add the system.serializable attribute that will allow Unity to store the state of the objects that we create. We'll also use the Anima2D namespace by adding it above. We will create two game object variables. One will be limb prefab, that will be the limb game object that we created earlier, and limb bone, that will be the bone that corresponds to the body mesh on the character. We will set a reference to the body mesh with a sprite mesh instance variable called limb bone mesh. For the next variable, we will use the hide and inspector attribute to hide it in the Unity editor, since this variable will only be a reference, so we will need to see it. The last two variables will use the range attribute to show the slider in Unity. These variables will be floats, named detach force and detach rotation force. These two floats will be the forces that we apply to the limb when it's detached. All of these variables have to be set to public so that they will be accessible to other scripts. Now let's go back to our fallen limb script. We will now create the start function that will call a function named list initialize. Then we will make sure current limb is set to zero. Let's create the list initialize function. This function will be of type void and will take no arguments. Inside, we will use a for loop to go through all of the elements in the list and we will set up the reference to the sprite renderer. We will then disable the limb. We will now create the update function that will be in charge of activating the effect when we left click with the mouse. We will use button done in an if statement. Inside, we will call the loose next limb function. Now the hardest part, the loose next limb function. This function will return void and take no arguments. Inside, we will check is active first to make sure we don't make the call on a limb out of range. Then we will create a rigid limb variable named limb to make the code easy to understand. We will change the color in the limb prefab render to the color A1. We will set the limb prefab to active and change the position and rotation to the one of the bone. We will access the rigid body 2D in the limb prefab and add an upwards force where the amount in the y axis of the vector is the detached force of that limb. We will also add some rotation force with add torque that will be a random between the negative value of detached rotation force and its positive value. For that purpose we will use random.range and both of these forces will be of type impulse. Next we will set the real body mesh to be transparent and last we will start the coroutine fade 2 that is inside the limb script and we will increase current limb by 1. At the end of the function we will check if the current limb is bigger than the number of elements in the list and if it is we will make is active false. Okay, so now we're ready to set up the falling limbs uh, script with the limbs that we have. Okay, so now we're ready to set up that falling limb script and plug in all the references that we need. So fade time, I'm gonna leave it at one. I just wanted to fade out for one second towards transparent, then time until start. Let's leave that at two seconds. So when they fall off is when, when I pop it and the limb pops out, is gonna count one, two, and then it's gonna start fading out. And then in the list, since we have two limbs, I'm gonna say two. The element zero, let's make that the left arm. Keep in mind that um, they go in order. So the first one that you put is the first one that will pop out. In this case, I want it to be the shoulder. So let's drag the limb onto the limb prefab. Then let's go into the bones and let's look for the left arm bone. And let's drag that. Then limb bone mesh, let's look in the meshes and here it is, left shoulder. The detach force, I'm gonna put it at around eight and the rotation around six. Then let's do the same thing for the head. So let's drag it, 
then let's choose the bone, the head bone. The mesh is gonna be the head body mesh. And the force, I'm gonna set it to 12 and rotation to six. Let's also increase the mass of the head to three. Okay, so now we're ready to test it out. Let's go ahead and hit play. And you'll see we have our zombie in the idle animation. The limbs have been disabled, so they're not seen anymore. And if I left click, the left arm pops out and fades out. And then same for the head. And that's pretty much it for the system. Now, this system is pretty flexible. In this case, I'm doing it with a list, but you could also uh, not use a list and just use lose one limb. Or instead of calling the lose next limb function, in the update whenever we click the mouse you could do it so that whenever it's being hit so if it if you had a rigid body and a collider inside of the character and maybe some bad guy was shooting at him or the good guy was shooting at him then you would say um on collider collision enter 2d and then you could make the call in here you would check whether the collision dot collider came from the uh, is from a bullet and then you would make the call to the lowest limb function in here so that was it for this system i hope you liked the tutorial if you did subscribe give it a thumbs up if you liked it and leave any suggestions for future tutorials or comments that you have down in the comments below i will also leave a link in the description for the site where i got the zombie sprites from as well as the tiles and the background